Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. Yes, I'm late. I haven't reviewed June and it's the 13th of July. We're well and truly into July. So I thought I would do a bit of a video reviewing June and telling you what I'm up to in July. So welcome to all those new subscribers. I hope you enjoy my yarn adventures. Let's get started with a review of June. So in June, I tried out some new tutorials, patterns and other things. I made a dog bed for our new family member, Saxon. It's a bag a day tutorial. He loves it. And now he's getting bigger and quite the handful. He tries to cut this dog bed around with him wherever he wants to sleep instead of the spot it's supposed to stay in. So obviously the dog bed was a success. I went in search of a great dishcloth tutorial. There are so many out there. I only tried a few and there are still so many more to try. But it did help me use up some of my cotton stash. I made the Eye Cacao, which is a Ross pattern by the Smell Great Guy. Um, I made the Eye Cacao for Zeta's Calendar Cow for June and it turned out great. Now any channels or patterns or tutorials I uh, mention, everything will be in the description below to the best of my memory in case you want to check them out and try them. I did the Debrilla hat which is a pay for pattern from the Dabbling Hook. I really like that because it's a textured beanie and enjoyed doing that. And I tried so many other things but that's just a few that I did that I really enjoyed. I think I made, it was June, I made the uh, candles and cake shawl which I enjoyed and I used up some yarn that was sent to me by a um, crochet Nana Michelle. Now she's changed her channel name so I'll have to check that out. So in June the birthstone make along that I'm running for the year is going really well and we celebrated our second quarter and six months into the make along. June's birthstone was pearl and the most popular colour was cream. Now, quarterly I usually do a bit of a giveaway and Hope Mahoney won the giveaway and she has claimed her prize. So hopefully she enjoys spending her Amazon voucher. Um, what else was there in June? Let me just check my notes. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. I didn't really make anything special to promote fibre art. Um, but I did post a lot of, or share post, a lot of fibre art, um, I don't know, Facebook posts and Instagram posts that I thought were interesting, interesting, especially things from Prudence Mapstone and a few other people like Yarn Bombing. So I hope people enjoyed those. My Scorched Earth Challenge, I haven't worked out my yarn usage for June, so I'll probably do it June and July at the end of July. Um, I am keeping records, but the uh, my Scorch Just Challenge is using stash yarn that wasn't bought for any particular project in mine. I did buy yarn in June that wasn't for any particular project in mine. So I have to work out the balance of what was left over because I'm not reducing my stash by much, obviously. Um, what else was there in June? <laughs> A uh, big box store spotlight um, improved their tools section for knitting and crocheting. I did post a picture on Instagram. If I can find it, I'll put it in the end at the end of this video. They are stocking Knit Pro, all sorts of things. But the most exciting thing for me was they are now stocking tulip crochet hooks. Da -da -da -da. Normally they're $23 each, but one weekend they had 40% off. So I went and bought two to try. My favourite size is 4mm and 5mm. I'm going to try one. If I really like them, I'll keep them. If I don't, the one I don't try, I'll put in a, a future giveaway. But I've always wanted to try tulip hooks. And it's great that we have them here. And such a great stock of equipment to use that just isn't their own brand. So July arrives and of course Christmas in July. I am a Christmas fairy and if you haven't seen the video check it out. Now the issue with Christmas in July and my public service announcement. 
comments are being deleted, subscribers are being deleted. It's not as easy as it was last year and it's YouTube, not me. So please don't ask me why. I've spoken to the son that teaches IT and he said it's YouTube algorithms analytics. So basically, when you subscribe, you have to engage with the channel. You have to watch videos or a video for a certain length of time. You can like a, uh, and make a comment, that's interaction. You can even dislike a video, which will bring me to something else after this. But you must interact with the channel to be a legitimate, legitimate subscriber and people are being deleted. For example, I think the first day I climbed to 1,515 subscribers and with an hour I was back to 1,463. Now, my video, you needed to use a code word in your comment. And lots of, I've read all the comments and quite a few people didn't put that code word in. And you, so that meant you didn't watch the video. And if you want to be successful semi-finalist in my draw, when I use the random YouTube comment picker, I'll be using that code word. So you need to go back and check Fairy's videos and make sure you watch them properly because in mine, if you miss the code word, you're pretty much null and void. So that's it, guys. There's no point messaging me, emailing me, making comments. There's nothing I can do about what YouTube want to do with their algorithms and what they feel are legitimate subscribers. It's just the way it is. They're cracking down on subscribers. During the year, I might lose suddenly 10 overnight. And as my son tells me, that's YouTube deleting bots. They are deleting more than bots at the moment. They are looking for legitimate subscribers to channels that are enjoying the content. Now, when I say you can give it a thumbs down, I'm happy because you've interacted with the channel. And someone gave my Christmas in July video a thumbs down and then proceeded to go through my past videos and give them thumbs down. So I hope that they enjoyed doing that and it made them feel better because it certainly improved my analytics. Guys, just interact with the channel on any level, but I will not repost negative comments. Um, that's Christmas in July. So also on the 1st of July, birthstone make along for July. The, the birthstone is ruby and the colours I gave my participants to choose from or to use both with cerise pink or red so this is my project it's a v-stitch lapgan that i will give to charity and i used red because the way mine's working is it's eight rows and it's eight rows one month and i might the next month i might do two colors four and two and two then eight so june was due for eight rows and i love this red I'm starting to really fall in love with this type of red. But this is mine. And I think from the pictures being posted in the Make Along group, um, red is proving to be very popular. The Christmas in July videos, a couple of new people joined our Make Along group and I've kicked in and are doing the birthstone Make Along. It is so easy to catch up. And there's only six months to go and there's not a lot of requirement to join in. And there is a prize pack for one lucky participant at the end. So July for me, well, I jumped in feet first and joined a couple of make-alongs and cows. I did join the bot along with Fiber Floozy Jill and Daniel from Poor Ply Guy or Yarn. I can't remember which. I'll have to check it out. But the links to their channels Linking you to the blog along, the videos will be in the description below if I can find them. The bot along for me was a godsend because last year I bought some yarn for Thing and he wanted a men's poncho. Now I thought I bought this pattern a month ago, but I didn't. I actually bought it on the 7th of April, which is the day Saxon was born, our little puppy. It is the men's poncho. Now, I have to put my glasses on. Yes, they will for reflect the light. Easy men's poncho, hammer to fall, crochet pattern. I bought this pattern. It's a paid for pattern. 
there is a tutorial. It is fairly straightforward and easy, but I avoided making it when I read 203 Chain. I don't make big projects very often, and I had a laugh last year when I made Thing the Doctor Who Tom Baker scarf, which was two and a half metres long. He did pick the yarn last year, and he did pick this pattern, and it's got winter here, and he keeps asking, where's my poncho? So the bottle along gave me an idea to do it, because it is going to take me some time. And here is my start. I started on the 6th of July, which made it about the 5th in the Northern Hemisphere. I do so many rows a day before I give up. The reason it's difficult for me is because I race ahead and I lose stitch count and I am determined to keep going slowly and doing it and keeping the stitch count. This is going to be one piece and then there'll be another one. The bottle along goes to the end of September, so hopefully I'll have finished this men's poncho he wants. The yarn he picked last year I bought from my little crafty lady in Melanda was Red Heart Aran, which is a yarn made by the Australian um, yarn company under licence for Red Heart. It is nice and soft. Being the old hippie that he is, yes, he picked these colours. I think that's another reason... I wasn't keen to make it. I'm not a fan of these colours. However, it is crocheting up nice. The pattern idea for me buying the pattern was to support um, Bag O' Day and the fact that we were having internet troubles and I thought if I have the pattern, I can take it with me wherever I go if we go away. It is easy. It's just big and I rush and lose stitch count. So that is my first um cow for the bottle along with these guys and it is a great idea why one of us didn't think of it before I have no idea because she has so many patterns and so many tutorials you're bound to find one you like now I did start a second one because I've been eyeing off this baby blanket pattern and I bought the spotlight cocoon yarn anti-pilling eight ply it was on special. It was five 50 gram balls in a pack for $5. And we bought three packs. Th two different oranges. Orange being my favourite colour and grey. And I decided that this baby blanket pattern was ideal for a lap gown, for a charity blanket for the opera ward at the hospital, which houses or has residents are our dementia patients. Now the nurses tell me they like textured things because they fiddle and play with things so my second project I have started is this tutorial I can't even remember what this baby blanket is called one ball just a bit more there's usually a bit left over of orange makes three blocks of squares and then I do a block of grey but can you see those bobbles that they can play with and as you can see, I really love this because I started this on the 6th and I've been taking this to work with me and doing a bit on breaks or when I'm at appointments waiting around. Now, this is where I rush. One day I took this and assumed I had the right hook and did a whole section and realised it had gone wonky. I'd taken a bigger size hook with it. And I had crocheted a whole section, eight rows, in the wrong size. And I had to frog it. Judy, you need to slow down. But I really like that. And I rarely show you guys whips. You know, I like to finish them because I'm never sure they're going to turn out. I don't have that sort of confidence. Now, the beauty of this make-along is you cannot change the pattern. You mustn't adapt it. You can change the yarn and the hook size, but you can't change the pattern. For me, being able to change the yarn is ideal because a lot of the yarns Crystal uses, I can't get here in Australia. I usually have to order them from overseas. But the men's poncho is a four-way and this is an Aaron four-way. Now, Thing is five foot four. He tells everybody he's five foot six and he's quite fine. He's not overweight. 
So if this finishes a bit smaller than her pattern, that's no big deal. It probably will fit him better. But other than the yarn, I am using the same hook and I am following her pattern. This one, same size yarn, probably, I, I don't know. I'm using an 8 by 3 weight and a 4 millimeter, and I'm following the tutorial. I have not changed anything other than possibly the yarn used and the hook size. So that is the bot along, an awesome crochet along. Now, I did start a uh, make along with Valerie from Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet her jubilee in July or something she was making a doll and then one night her channel suddenly totally disappeared all her videos everything she's back it turns out I, I can't I don't know the full details of what went wrong but her account was suspended she is back but she lost her subscribers she had about 700 so we need to resubscribe to Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet and get her back to 700 she is a lovely lady. Um, if you've never checked her channel out below uh, before, please check the link below and check her out. So, oh, I did miss something for June. June was Pride Month, right? And normally I make a Pride Rainbow Tea Cozy. But if you've watched previous videos, you know that I bought yarn from Lincraft for Kogo and I wasn't impressed with it when I went to use it. It was quite harsh and scratchy. I did do a swatch and wash it, but it didn't soften. And I felt it wasn't suitable for wearables. And with Pride Month uh, um, Reeves, my son suggested, why don't you look at the trans flag and make a trans tea cozy? Because they were the colors I had in Lean Craft Yarn. So Jean's tea cozy was the trans flag colors. And it's a scallop tea cozy I make all the time with a drawstring top. It's very popular on my markets. But that was for Pride Month June. I forgot about that. It was buried under all this stuff. So also um, I have been doing, the beginning of July, promoting fiber art. I did post on Instagram and the Facebook page. The Gordon Vale Museum had their um, tea cozy display competition and photographic competition. They do it every two years. I was invited to put something in, which I did. However, they do crochet tea cozy, knitted tea cozy and other. And because mine were knitted and crocheted, they went in other, which meant there were tea cozies built out of Lego, tea cozies built out of pipe cleaners. Now, the winners of the, the winner of the crochet tea cozy, it is awesome. It was her own design pattern, and believe it or not, it took her eight months to make. It is a crayfish or lobster across a rock with shells. I do have a photo of it. This crochet stitching was perfect. I did meet this lady, and yeah, that's how she told me it took her eight months. I am not sure I would want to spend eight months creating a tea cozy, but she definitely deserved to win the crochet tea cozy. The knitted tea cozy I've made before, it's the bunny um, mum or something. She's got an apron. It's a knitted tea cozy. It's actually a Canadian free pattern to raise money for cancer. I've had it for a while. That was the one that won the knitted tea cozy. The other section was something built out of pipe cleaners and quite creative. But yes, this is an awesome little competition to promote a um, local community museum. They are considering doing it every year instead of every two years. And I've certainly got the bug after seeing this crayfish on a rock. I don't know if I'd be that creative, but I subscribe to T Cozy Folk, uh, a UK. She's just started a YouTube channel and I've bought a couple of her patterns that I am knitted patterns that I'm going to try out. Um, she uses a lot of style craft yarn, so I might have to hit up Wool Warehouse and order some yarn because I intend to try and do something a little bit more creative to enter into a tea cozy competition promoting fiber art. So, in summary, 
for all those people who gave me tips and ideas on how to get the smell out of my smelly new yarn. Thank you. I am trying some of them. A friend gave me some yarn that she'd been reluctant to give to me. It had been given to her. It's pure wool. It had a worse smell than the Noro, and that's why she didn't want to give it to me. But she's given it to me, and I am experimenting with both yarns, the different tips and things people have given me. I checked out Jennifer from Synonym Stitches, her ideas on how to get smells out of yarn, and I'm trying everything. So I'll probably do a bit of a review video on what worked best for me to get the smell out of yarn. But thank you to all those subscribers for leaving suggestions. It's great to have feedback that I can work with. Um, so don't forget, big shout out to Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet. Make sure you check out her channel. Subscribe if you like her content. She is a lovely lady. Well, July is in full swing for me. I am very busy at work, which brings me to those um, new channels who've subscribed to me and keep asking why I haven't subscribed to them. I haven't had time to watch your videos and check you out. A few I have. I like to check the content before I automatically hit subscribe, but I will get around to it. So those people have asked me why I don't go to their lives. you got to remember I'm in Australia and sometimes the time difference is a killer. You might be alive when I'm asleep. And yes, I like my sleep. I'm very busy at work. I do manage to occasionally on my lunch hour if I can fire up YouTube jump into a live I always let people know I'm there I might not have much to um, contribute but I like to listen to what people are talking about especially if it's to do with yarn so yes it's not that I don't like your lives I don't like your channel I'm just time poor at the moment at work I work part-time but right now I'm putting in full-time hours because I am going undergoing two audits simultaneously until we have our annual general meeting on August the 8th and everything will go quiet and then you will be sick of seeing me comment or being alive. I have never tried doing a live and I don't know if I ever will. So guys I hope you're enjoying your July. I am even if I am busy. Remember life's an adventure so make sure you have one crafty yarn adventure every week. Bye for now.